Welcome back to the channel everyone, it's me Matt. If you're new here, I deep dive into military technologies, tactics and the incredible vehicles and weapon systems that exist around the world. And before I get started, let me ask you this question. What is your favourite ground-based self-propelled anti-aircraft gun system or missile air defence system? Let me know in the comments section below because I'd love to hear what your systems you find the most fascinating and it's always nice to read the comments. Some of you like the western side of military equipment and some of you the east and some of you just the peculiar... <laughs> Now, personally, I do have a soft spot for the German Gepard. It's superior engineering, pretty immense firepower, and an incredibly domineering aesthetic. Personally, make it one of the most coolest pieces of military hardware out there. Um, but today, as you can see, we're taking a look at something a little different and quite unique and special. The Core Cut Air Defense Vehicle. Now, this system is a testament to the growing capabilities of Turkish defense sector production, which I have to say, I personally have a lot of respect for. And why do I personally have a lot of respect for it? Well, first of all, Turkey has made incredible strides in recent years, showcasing a lot of innovation, um, some really good engineering across their defense platforms. And there are so many different companies out there producing so many different systems. And one of the reasons I respect Turkish engineering on a personal front is my own experience is their weaponry that I actually own, the Derya Mark 12 shotgun. And it's actually now banned for use in the Canadian world uh, from the government, unfortunately, but it's still one of my favorite shotguns. It's incredibly robust, never had a single issue with it, and Turkish firearms and equipment are truly built to last, again, in my opinion. Now, if you are enjoying content like this, please feel free to support the channel. It's uh, going to be tough for me in the near future to keep up with some of the bigger channels, but the algorithm's got a bit of a challenge with me in the channel. But if you are supporting me, it really does help. But let's talk about this fascinating Korkut air defense vehicle. So we have to talk a little bit about Turkish ground forces first, and historically, they've been very dependent on very outdated air defense systems, and they embarked on a bit of a transformation journey to modernize their capabilities with one of the systems they introduced as today's core cut air defense system. This is an advanced self-propelled anti-aircraft system and represents a significant leap in Turkey's air defense strategy, addressing quite a large gap and introducing some really cutting edge technology tailored to contemporary threats such as aircraft and helicopters, but also of course drones. Turkey's air defense units have faced critical challenges though in modernizing their arsenal and it's very difficult for them to keep up with the technology span that they're trying to face with producing equipment in their own factories, in their own country. Uh, and I actually, again, really respect that, but there's a plethora of defense systems that this particular company, Aselen, or Aselen, I can't say it very well, are producing. And uh, the reliance on the towed artillery systems, particularly the aging American-made M42A1 Duster, highlighted a glaring need for innovation. To overcome these limitations, Turkey initiated the Korkup project. SLN AS led the development with FN SS Savnuma, System Maleri AS, and Makina V Kimya Industria Kumuru, or MKEK, as collaborators. They named it the Korkuk, meaning solid or decisive, and this project was driven by a vision of building a self-reliant, modern air defense solution. Development began in the early 2010s, levering cost-effective strategies and modular design principles to create a system that balanced operational efficiency with affordability. The Korkuk's modular architecture make it a standout project, comprising of two distinct yet complementary vehicles, the KKA, Komuta Control Arisi, and the Command Control Vehicle is in that configuration, and the SSA, or Silla Sistemi Arsi, which is the weapon system vehicle, basically two gigantic cannons on top of it. This dual vehicle system was conceptualized to deliver both centralized and command functionality and potent firepower in this field, and as you can see, from the various options and ranging and systems they have available, Korka is in that mid-range defense sector. I really like the way they've showcased these vehicles in the sort of upscaling of the range and the effectivity of these weapons. You know, you're looking at some seriously intensive radars here, but the core cut is designed for those low-flying aircraft, fast-flying aircraft, drones, things like that, kind of the mid-range systems, uh, not the heavier duty that you're seeing in some of these videos and pictures. The backbone of the core cut system is the FNSS ACV-30 track chassis. This is a very versatile and fairly robust platform that ensures reliability across various operational scenarios. In all honesty, it's very similar to an M113. 
The vehicle's hull is constructed using a combination of armoured steel and aluminum, offering formidable protection against small arms fire and mines. Its Stanag 4569 Level 4 Ballistic Protection makes it resistant up to 14.5mm armoured piercing rounds, while its Level 2 Mine Protection allows it to withstand explosions equivalent to up to 6kg of TNT. The vehicles are powered by a pretty impressive 600 horsepower diesel engine paired with a fully automatic transmission. The ACV-30 can achieve speeds of up to 65 km an hour on land and even 6 km an hour in water, allowing this vehicle to be somewhat amphibious, although the size of these vehicles I'm a little bit doubtful of that. This amphibious capability is enhanced by water jets mounted at the rear, which enables the vehicles to traverse rivers and aquatic obstacles apparently very easily. I disagree though, I think a vehicle of this configuration shouldn't really need to go across water, but it does have six wheel torsion bar suspension systems which further boosts very good off-road performance, allowing it to tackle some pretty rough terrains with ease. Now the gun chassis is fairly tall, it's certainly not hiding from anything, with dimensions of 7 meters in length and 3.9 meters in width and weighing approximately around 30 tons for each of the vehicles, the ACV is supposed to strike a bit of an ideal balance between size and mobility, but I'm not too sure with the gun carriage if it's really achieving that as much. It is a tall, beefy, chunky little vehicle, and it's also carrying a lot of ammunition for those cannons, up to 4,000 rounds. Its modular design is supposed to also facilitate some seamless integration in a range of other components. Of course, the radar system and the gun platform can be somewhat interchangeable. Of course, the turrets are not quite as simple to do, but it is possible. The electronic equipment is also unparalleled in its adaptability, allowing it to be quickly changed in and out if necessary for repairs or modifications. The Commander Control Vehicle, or KKA, serves as the brain of the entire Corkut system, coordinating and directing the actions of multiple SSA units. It's equipped with a state-of-the-art radar and optoelectrical system mounted on a rotating turret. These advanced systems provide real-time panoramic views of the airspace, enabling swift identification and engagement of a multitude of threats, including low-flying jets, fast jets, helicopters, and drones. Now, the KKA's radar boasts a detection range of up to 18 kilometers, which personally I actually don't think is that far. This is supposed to be a critical capability for ensuring its battlefield awareness, but many people will say, well, 18 kilometers, including myself, isn't very far, but these don't work on their own. They tend to have overlapping 18 kilometer range circles between batteries of these units working together. It's not gonna be a single platoon or setup of corkets. They're gonna work in situ with other regiments or battalions in the area to make an overlapping bubble or network of coverage. And that's why you don't wanna to get too linked into the range coverage of a radar of a system because it's always going to work in parallel with other systems. However, I do feel 18 kilometers isn't quite as far as you'd want it to be, but it doesn't need to be much further. You have to remember this is not designed to be a long range engagement. This is to detect the aircraft coming in or the threat coming in. It's not going to be engaged at 18 kilometers away, so it doesn't need to be detecting a long way away, but it would be nice to have a little bit more radar detection prior to a target coming towards your position. Beyond its radar capabilities, the KKA is integrated with an identification friend or foe or IFF system, which ensures accurate differentiation between allied and hostile forces, something which unfortunately is growing more and more dangerous in today's airspaces. Now the vehicle is really focused on a sophisticated operator console and experience, which is offering a user-friendly interface for mission planning and execution and giving really clear, vivid imagery of when looking and finding targets either via the radar or when looking for targets through the optronics on the vehicle weapon system. This combination of advanced sensors and control systems make the KKA a indispensable element really for Corcoq's operational framework, and it has a massive multitude of backup behind it, whether it's short range defense, radar systems, or long range missile defense. As I mentioned before, it's certainly not its own. But the weapon system vehicle or SSA represents the firepower of the Corcoq system. It has a remote control turret equipped with twin 35mm Urkelon KDC-02 automatic cannons, which are renowned for their precision and reliability. Now, as we all know, anti-aircraft guns require a massive amount of firepower, and this particular system is capable of a combined firing rate of 1,100 rounds per minute. These cannons deliver an overwhelming amount of firepower against a variety of aerial threats. 
Now the SSA is equipped with an innovative automatic ammunition feeding system that enables rapid switching between different types of ammunition. This includes high explosive incendiary rounds, target practice or tracer rounds, and highly advanced 35mm airburst ammunition or atom ammunition, which is a programmable ammunition as it leaves the barrel. Developed by Asalan, Atom Rounds significantly enhance the core cut's effectiveness against modern aerial threats by detonating at precise distances from their targets, which can be pre-programmed from the gunner. The SSA's integrated radar system and electro-optical systems enable autonomous target acquisition and tracking, allowing you to basically select the target and the gun will take over. This reduces the reliance on external inputs, but also a little scary because if you target the wrong thing, well, it's just going to do it anyway. But the FFO or friend or foe system should technically identify whether or not it's a problem, but it's still a little scary in my eyes. As I said before, the 18 kilometers range for the radar is where it's detecting targets, but this system, when firing, has an effective range of up to 4 kilometers and provides a formidable layer of defense to close range air defense. The vehicle also includes a storage of up to 600 rounds of ready ammunition, but further ammunition can be stored into the back up to 4,000 rounds if necessary, ensuring sustained operational readiness. So there you have it folks, a fairly formidable anti-aircraft system, not a huge amount to break down here, I mean it is basically a standalone gun connected to a standalone radar with a pretty good weapon system. I mean, uh, Urklon is certainly a respected cannon and the programmable ammunition I think is a game changer, particularly for knocking out drones because they're very hard to engage with standardized ammunition. You're gonna want some proximity in there. Thanks so much for watching today's breakdown. If you enjoyed learning about this incredible piece of equipment, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. And don't forget to subscribe for any more deep dives into military technology and systems around the world. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Corker, even if it's your own favorite self-propelled air defense system, put it in the comments below. Let's get the discussion going. And I really do think it's super cool how Turkey has managed to create a very versatile and robust air defense network, especially with the innovations like the Atom Airburst Munition. It's super cool. And I really like the Corker overall. Once again, thanks for supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay curious, stay informed, and as always, have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.